Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today, I'm going to show you how to clean up that nasty, gunky, sticky, crappy leftover residual flux without having to run everything through the ultrasonic every single time. I mean, crap. What if you have a board that has tons of microphones on it? Can't even ultrasonic that. Not without doing a bunch of work. Anyway, check it out. All right, so here's the deal. When you're working on a board and you're doing a lot of work, sometimes it can get pretty nasty and pretty gummy pretty quick. And I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like to work clean. But I don't want to have to use my ultrasonic every five minutes and run it through that entire process. Because believe me, it's not just about throwing it in there. You're throwing it in there. You're scrubbing it. You're flipping it over. You're scrubbing it. You're you're doing your thing. You're taking it out. You're, there, there's so many aspects to doing an ultrasonic cleaning that while you're working just aren't really viable or efficient. Um, so I'm going to show you today how to clean up flux efficiently while you're working and not have it control you. You need to control it. Okay. So with that being said, I've got a little bit of a little demonstration here. Um, yeah, there we go. Oh man. So say for instance, I harvested these three right here. I did some work over here. You know, we've got underfill, overfill, conformal coating. We got all kinds of ridiculous, just nasty stuff going on here. Okay. And you know, you might be thinking, well, Justin, I can just throw that in the ultrasonic cleaner. Well, what if you need to do something else? What if this is a board that you're actually just working on and you had to take off all three, like somebody just destroyed them or something? Are you going to sit there and wait like 10, 15 minutes for the ultrasonic? No. So what we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our block or whatever you use to weigh it down or hold it, whatever. And we're going to do one simple little thing. Now, I'm going to hold up this Q-tip and you're going to be like, well, duh, Justin, use isopropyl alcohol. It's 99%. You just do your thing. You know what I mean? Uh, that's only one aspect of it. If you watched one of my other videos on how to remove residual adhesive off like tablets and phones, you're going to know what I'm about to tell you because it's the exact same thing because it's a fundamental, okay? We're going to take our Q-tip, we're going to dip it in our 99% isopropyl alcohol, and we're going to apply some heat before we touch it, okay? Now, you're thinking, well, Justin, I heard a long time ago or I heard recently that you are not allowed to use heat on the board while you're cleaning it up, that's BS. You're gonna you're gonna warp the fiberglass in the board and rabble, rabble, rabble. Well, calm down, okay? That's because people aren't thinking. If you're thinking, you'll understand that you can use a lower temperature, okay? Isopropyl alcohol evaporates in room temperature, okay? But when you leave it on the board like that, it streaks and leaves crappy stuff, right? So I've got isopropyl on the end of my little q-tip here and I don't know about you guys but I usually remove general apple under fill you know at about 140 you know not that much more for anything else okay it's always going to be under the melting point temperature okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat up the whole area with a low temperature okay 140 degrees is not that big a deal for a board it can yeah, if the board's not on, it's just sitting there. You can probably leave it sitting there for you know half a day, probably even longer. Never even really tried that, but I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue. We're going to heat it up a little bit. Got our isopropyl here. And we're just going to roll. Now there's a lot of flux here, okay? So we're probably going to need a couple. That's weird. That one just came. You know, normally you're not going to have this much going on. The deal is we're rolling it. That way there can be new material for it to absorb to. Okay. You see what happens when we up here in the corner? If we keep using the same Q-tip, it's just going to keep putting the same flux back down. So you might need to use a few Q-tips depending how big your, your mess is. But, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but this is getting pretty clean. Just gonna need a couple cute tips. Like I said, we're not really using a high temperature here. That looks.
looks super clean. That's not even even the conformal coating in the underfill is fine. Let's move over here in this little crappy area. Let's see if we can clean anything up then. We've only used a couple Q-tips. You should be able to buy them by the thousand for like three dollars. So I don't want to hear none of that. Real quick stop here. Fun fact. Okay. Not only is the heat going to help in evaporating the isopropyl quicker and allowing you to kind of make your maneuvers better and cleaner, but this is my favorite part. That little bit of heat is going to activate the flux and the viscosity is going to change. It's not going to be so thick and gummy. It's going to be real thin and it's going to just absorb directly into your Q-tip. That's why we keep using new Q-tips. That's why we use the isopropyl. That's why we use the heat. It all comes together. The deal is once you, it's like, you know, you can't use the same paper towel, you know, over and over and over. This is the exact same thing. You know, you cannot use that same paper towel over and over. And you can already see we've cleaned out quite a bunch right there. The deal is new isopropyl, new Q-tip. You can kind of brush it a little bit at the end there and get it up. I mean, you guys saw how much was in here at the beginning. All right, so we've got all the, the major stuff out. Now, we can go back in and we can just if you want it to be a little more just a nice quick with a new one it's going to prevent any major streaking or anything and you see I'm rolling it I'm rolling it okay you can grab it by the back here if you're using gloves it makes it easier the deal is you're trying to use new paper towels the whole time you don't want to sit there and use the same one over and over and over. Have you ever tried to clean all the windows in your car with one paper towel? Let me see, because it's not going to be pretty, all right? Anyway, that's kind of little, my little secret here on removing this stuff. I know a lot of people are really sketched out on using any kind of heat with isopropyl. Um, the big key here is understanding and knowledge of isopropyl and what you're actually doing. Um, the flash point for isopropyl alcohol is so much higher than what we're using right now, it's not that big of a deal, okay? There is, at, you could take what I'm doing right now and just point it directly into a cup of isopropyl. It's not gonna do anything, it's just gonna evaporate it, okay? Um, same with the board. You're not heating the board up so much that you're gonna get thermal shock, okay? Thermal shock's gonna be a little bit higher than that. You're gonna be, that'd be like if you just took off like, you know, a chip or something and you were just like, ah! <laughs> if you see it sizzling, that's when you've got a shock problem. Okay, if you're using a lower temperature, you're going to be fine. And we can see right here, there was a, I'm talking about, I poured a bunch of this on here. I activated it for like two or three minutes just using the soldering iron. Like, I wanted it to become nasty, sticky, and gummy. And guess what? It didn't matter. It's all gone. So, anyway, I really hope you learned something today. I hope you took something away from this for sure. Um, it's a really good little technique to kind of clean as you go to make sure that you're working I don't know. I don't know if this is even really necessary. I just like to work clean. So I figured I'd share that with you guys so that you guys could, you know, also work clean if you wanted to. Um, if you like the video, go ahead, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed already, you already know what to do because, you know, it's YouTube. You just got to like and subscribe. And the most important thing of all, notifications. Turn the notifications on. That way you know when I put something out. If you like this video, there's a lot more where that came from. That's all I'm saying. Don't forget guys, if you're interested in any of the tools I use, check out the description below. I even have my own custom tools that I sell down there as well that literally do not exist anywhere else on the planet except from the art of repair. I also have a Patreon where you can help support the channel so I can create even better high quality content.